What's going on guys? Logan JY here and I finally got Inferni Synchro for you. You guys have been asking for a while and I think it's about time, way overdue, that I bring you the deck profile, okay? We're going to split this up into two parts, okay? So this first video is going to be the deck profile. As long as we smash that 50 like goal, I'll be more than happy to show you how Inferni Synchro combos actually work. So, and I also want to hear from you guys, what are the best combo lines you guys are able to figure out with the Inferni Synchro build? Leave them in the comments down below. Anyway, I don't want to preface this too much. Shout out to our sponsor. Shout out to Team Grim YGO. Check them all out in the link down below. And uh, let's get into this. What's going on, guys? Logan JY here, and I finally got the Infernity Synchro deck profile for you. And if you guys want to see the test hands and combo tutorials for this video, be sure to smash 50 likes, and I'll be happy to provide them for you. But anyway, without further ado, let me show you guys the list. And I encourage you all to let me know the greatest combo lines that you were able to figure out on your own in the comments down below. Anyway, let's get into it. Starting things off, we are playing the one copy of Inferni Archfiend. Konami, where are our other two copies? I am very tired of waiting. Could you please give us two more Archfiends back? K thanks, Logan JYA. Moving on from there, we are only playing this, and now we bumped it down to one copy of Necromancer. I know in the Link Climb variant, we abuse the crap out of this card and play two to three copies. Well, in this build, I'm telling you, you only need one. And in the combo tutorial, I'll explain that more. So be sure to smash the likes, and I'll be happy to share it. The one Patriarch is still mandatory, and since this is the Synchro build, we need tuners. We're playing one Wild. Cat and one Avenger, which are essential, and I'll explain why a little bit later on. To round out the Inferni package, we are playing two copies of Mirage, which we don't need to max out on three on this because we are abusing it with one of our Synchro Monsters, and I'm sure you can guess what that is. Continuing with the monster lineup, we bumped it up to triple tour guide in this build. I apologize for the mixed matched freaking uh, artworks, but it still works. It's still tour guide, and it's one of our best starters, so I highly encourage you guys to play all three copies of this card. Moving on from that, we've got double copy of Stygian Street Patrol. A lot of people commented that playing three of this was too bricky, and in this build, I absolutely agree with you. I think two is enough. Two helps you get the play started, and you want to send this off your Foolish Burial, off of your Danger Effects, off of your Void Apocalypse, and nothing really else. Moving on from there, the key pieces that go with your rank 3, level 3 package, we've got the uh, Fiendish Rana Warrior and the Archfiend Eris. Eris, of course, you send off a Rhino to search out Archfiend. We've then got the Danger Suchinoko, the Danger Jackalope, and the Danger Mothman. You could bump up the Danger count because I now know that they're at more than one per copy per deck, but in this particular build, I wanted to keep it at a strict 40, and I'm using these as just additional copies of Upstart Goblin slash Extenders, so you could definitely bump these up, but right now I'm keeping them at this little limited package, but curious to hear what you guys think about that. Moving on from there, I'm playing one copy of Edge and Sabres, it's another level 3 option to summon off of your tour guide, where if you open up too many monsters, it lets you push them back and continue to push on and play through while recurring a level 3 from Grave to make your Cherubini, to make your Levier, yada yada yada. Moving on from there, let's get into the spell cards. Of course, we're playing the one Inferni Launcher, Konami, my guys. Could we get a couple more copies of Launcher too while you're at it? Okay, listen, 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 listen. Three Archfiend. Let's do it. Triple Launcher. Let's make it even better, alright? Let's, let's get more of those. But yeah, we play the one launcher, obviously. Moving on from there, triple drag down from the grave. Uh, this is your hand trap response card. You know, you take a look at the opponent's hand, rip out any of those problem cards. They get to rip out a card from your hand, but do you even really care? Let them rip a danger. Let them rip a necromancer. Let them rip a dead card or a monster card that you can't really get rid of otherwise. And then draw an extra card that lets you play even further beyond. Moving on from there, we got the triple copies of Void Apocalypse, three extra copies of Foolish Burial that help thin out your hand. Really essential for sending those Stygians or that Fiendus or that uh, or that Archfiend sometimes even. Moving on from there, we've got the triple copies of Forbidden Droplets. It's your going second card. It helps turn off all of those interruptions that stop you from playing, make it give you a fighting chance against those build a board decks. Moving on from there, we've got two copies of Lure of Darkness for additional draw power to go deeper into the deck. We're playing the One World Legacy Succession and the One Monster Reborn. Basically, they serve the same purpose. Bring back Archfiend or Necromancer so you can continue to combo. The One for One to summon out the Infernity Mirage from the deck. The One Foolish Burial to send and search your Archfiend or just to send your Archfiend straight up or Necromancer or whatever, whatever piece you're missing. The One Card Destruction to go deeper into your deck and get monsters out, clean out dead hands, you know the drill. The one into the void, because you're ending on zero cards in hand anyway. This is the handless combo, so it just serves another upstart goblin. And we're playing, of course, the one upstart goblin, because why not? 
And then finally, uh, this was something we got a lot of comments on in the last video, so I want to make express notice of this. We cut it down, we're doing double barrier in this build, and the one Infernity Break. While you are still sending, ending on a similar amount of interruptions, that's right, seven to eight to nine interruptions on the opponent's turn, we are able to facilitate that with only two barrier and one break. While reducing the amount of brick hands, it's good, and in this particular build where you are using the synchro mechanic, you're not able to abuse the link pack as much in the extra as you normally would, so we cut down the trap line up a little bit. We still got very applicable trap cards, and the Infernity Break has a special interaction with one of our extra deck monsters, so be sure to stick around and go check out the combo tutorial when it comes out to see how that even works even better. Moving on from there, let's get into the extra deck. We are playing the Halky Fibrax, of course, because this is the Synchro build. The Churubini Weenie is one of our main enablers of our combos. So easy to make with the tour guide or our danger monsters. The one barricade board blocker to help empty out your hands sometimes. Just kidding, don't use that effect. That was a prank. Did you fall for it? Because it's a mandatory add back and end phase, which means you're gonna add back your launcher, you're gonna brick all your cards. Be smart about this, guys. The more you know. Moving on is the Nightmare Unicorn, which lets you shuffle back and helps you climb into your boy access code talker. It's good if you have to go second. You, this deck does, definitely doesn't like to go second, but if you have to do it, it's good to have these options in there. Moving on from there, we've got our Unchained Abomination. When you see the combo tutorial, guys, you're going to see how big and powerful this guy is, especially in combination with that break. Wink, wink. And then we got the Appalosa, of course, you know, our hand trap protection, that thing that lets us get those extra negates. You know, we, we just like throwing negates the out there. It's just how it is. And then we've got two copies of Sarayuja Skull Dread, all right? So, you know, special summoning from the hand, digging deeper into the deck if need be. Sometimes that comes up in this build a little bit more than it does in the Link Climb build, but just wanted to point that out there. We're still playing two copies of this guy. Moving on to the Exceed Monsters, we've got two copies of Levier the Sea Dragon, which you use to detach one, special summon back, usually your Inferno Mirage, that's what it oftentimes ends up being. And then we got the Dugaris the Timeless, you know, bring back Archfiend or Necromancer to continue extending your plays, usually make him using Patriarch or a Danger Mothman. And then finally, the Synchros, baby. Now, I know it looks slim, but trust me, these Synchros pack heck of a punch. So we're playing our Negates, right? We've got our Boral Savage, and we've got our Herald of the Arclight, which are really easy to make with our Avenger and our Wildcat. It makes it super easy to climb into these two guys, throw them on the end board, and just make it that much spicier. And then finally, we've got the big boy, the Enabler, the Hundred Eyes Dragon. Check out that name shift. Look at that. Gorgeous. This card is absolutely phenomenal. You use it to continue abusing Infernity Mirage. That's right, you get to use Mirage again, make him into Mirage, and then you summon that Mirage back again with your, with your Levier. It's absolutely insane. That's why we get to play fewer copies of Necromancer and Mirage, because we're just going to reuse them with our boy Hundred Eyes. And if you want to see how that works, again, stick around. We're going to do the combo tutorial video real soon. Now, to wrap this up, I wanted to put together a side deck for you guys that would be applicable in case you wanted to take this deck to a tournament. I'm going to preface this by saying it's not the most consistent deck, but it has an insanely high ceiling, so it's definitely fun to try if you want to give it a shot. And again, shout out to my boy, Bra on Poke, who helped me put together this list and is an innovator in the Infernity scene. So, for the side deck, we've got triple copies of Artifact Lancia. You can set some to the back row, and they're really good against the Tri Brigade matchup and the other deck that banishes, like Virtual World. We've got triple copies of Evenly Matched to blow out those back rows, to blow out those build -a board decks. You name it, we got it. Sky Striker, Eldlich, see ya chump. Moving on from there, we've got triple copies of the Twin Twisters, like so. Uh, blow out the back row, triple copies of the Triple Tactics Talents, Hand Traps, and then triple copies of the Infinite Impermanence. A hand trap we're able to play, because worst comes to worst, we can set it to the back row if we rip it off the top, or we can play it if we rip it off the top. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got for this Infernity list. I really, really, really hope you enjoyed it, and I also really, really, really hope Konami gives us back more copies of Archfiend. Why do they got to keep us waiting this long, okay? Hasn't it been long enough? I think we've suffered. If you want to see Archfiend come back, be sure to smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content, and that's all I got for you guys today. Logan JYA signing off. Have a great day, and I'll see you chumps later. Peace. <laughs> Kokoro no ski na ume